How are we doing, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of FSI's NASCAR DFS Pick Show for the Truck Series at Las Vegas. 134 miles around, or 134 laps, excuse me, around this Las Vegas track. It is TK Nation 47 here with Mega Ruler 31. Uh, welcome back to another week, Mega. This week, this uh, season is rolling right along. Yeah, and we get all three this week. So, yeah, trucks took off last week, and there'll be some weeks where we have trucks and no Xfinity. And but it's pretty cool to have all three at the same track. So. You know, it gets kind of weird when you're trying to break down, like, you know, three different places on the same weekend. Yes, luckily we are not at that point in the season yet. <laughs> so uh, Las Vegas is a uh, very, I think it's a decent track. Um, it's a so desert called, too, so we don't have to worry about weather, hopefully. Yeah, oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> those The Florida tracks in weather. Uh, but yeah, Las Vegas, pretty fun track. I wouldn't say it's a, uh, you know, as exciting as it can get for small or road courses but for mile and a half um, it's easier to predict and uh, for us it's going to be an easier breakdown so it's kind of like our wheelhouse event um, but let's we got a talking couple talking points this week this is the first driving uh this is the first time we get Kyle Busch uh, racing down in the truck series so it is what we call a Kyle Busch truck week and uh, not typically a fun slate uh, his price tag super inflated at 15k his dominance in the truck series is well known so let's just talk a little bit about Kyle Busch in, in his truck truck series dominance and what these weeks usually detail well it's kind of like the NBA player going and playing against high school kids yeah. but <laughs> but doesn't they don't always win but more often than not he's going to be out there he's going to start in the back because he doesn't have many points and he's going to get many place differential points. He's going to lead a lot of laps, have a lot of fast laps as he gets up to the front. It's all going to add up. The trucks don't run as many laps, um, but you're looking at anywhere from like 80 to hundred DK points for him. Yeah. So he's kind of, and the problem is, is he's 15 K. Yeah. That, that sucks. Expensive. <laughs> so it's like they're daring you to play him. But so we're going to talk about um, strategy, you know, playing him. And uh, you almost have to in, in situations mm -hmm. like this. Like he goes down and he's only allowed to run five races. He makes the most of it. And it's kind of beneficial because it draws attention to the lower, um, well, you know, the, these developmental leagues of truck and Xfinity. And, uh, you know, it gets people's attention. And I think the drivers enjoy having him there too, learning from them and stuff. It's kind of, they're like mentor races, I guess we've said. Sure. But TK, we've, yeah. got, we've got another big problem here this week. What's our, what's our other big problem? What do we got? Well, we have another very expensive guy starting towards the back that won this race last time out in Austin Hill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> two so spots we, right behind them <laughs> so if we take both those drivers it only leaves a 6k for the rest of our roster can we do it Oof. i i don't know i i we were talking a little bit about it before we got on here and we were trying to go through names and how these builds would pay off i mean we we both know you know they're both going to get place differential points you know one's 4k cheaper but one's got the more potential to dominate. Um, do you have to play Hill and Cal Bush in both your lineups? I don't think so, but I think a lot of um, players going to try to because it's so appealing. So um, why don't we look at some alternates to this scenario up top? And then mm -hmm. at the end for the, the people, let's just go from 7K all the way down to the bottom and we can be like, play or don't. Sound right. Good? Yeah, I think that's the perfect way to attack this. There's not really much, you know, we can do other than say, hey, play Kyle Bush. It doesn't matter what the price tag is, and then let's just build from there. Uh, so who are two guys that you think can dominate this race, not named Kyle Bush, at the outcome that Kyle Bush doesn't have the fastest car? Who do you think could potentially have the fastest car, not named Kyle Bush? Well, I really like Sheldon Creed. He's starting second. He's a very good driver uh he's only 
hundred. And I think that he can get out. Um, ben Rhodes has the pull, but I don't see him hanging on to it. I, I definitely see Creed getting out there. Uh, the other guy starting up top that I would like would be um, Matt Kraft. And he's got a Thor sports truck. They're very fast trucks, very well run team. If you look at some of the other guys starting up there close, you have John Hunter Nemec Chuck, who is a good driver and a very good truck. But you know who owns the truck? <laughs> Kyle Bush. Kyle Bush. <laughs> so are you going to try to race your boss and run him off the track and, uh, you know, steal the victory for him? Probably not. So, um, and, but the other guy that I find kind of interesting too, that is also starting in the back and saves you, he only saves you 400 on Austin Hill, but it could be a definitely a good GPP play if you wanted to fade Kyle and pair him with Hill. Um, to be very contrarian, is Zane Smith. I think mm -hmm. he's a good driver, um, had a little bit of rough start to the year. That's why he's so far back. But he's got a decent truck. He's got some speed and definitely can see him um, getting up into the top 10 and uh, finishing decently. So there's somebody else to kind of pivot off of him. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, is that Kyle Busch makes his way through this this field so quickly, even at 29th spot, it takes literally like maybe a lap or two and he's already up there at the top and he could easily start leading laps from there. But, you know, Sheldon Creed would probably be the only guy I could see fending off Kyle Busch for maybe 20 of those laps. And then maybe at throughout has like a different kind of off strategy that kind of outplays the Kyle Busch dominant car or truck. But it's really all about Kyle Busch. I really like the Zane Smith call. I think that's really sharp. He's a really good driver. There is one more driver, though, that is starting way in the back. Parker Kligerman yes. at 40th, 10-1. Are we playing a little bit of Parker and GBPs? Yeah, I'd, he would definitely be one to replace um, either Hill or Bush in. Um, I definitely think to place differential, he's – well, I don't know if he can win the race, but I definitely, right. it definitely, like we're talking top 15, um, pro probably top 10. Um, the other thing with Kyle Busch, too, is NASCAR likes to mess with him. He mm -hmm. has had so many questionable, like, penalties on, like, pit road. It's just, like, ticky-tack, picky things. Like, he was point zero 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 one over, like, the pit road speed <laughs> limit. You know, like very, very fractional, marginal things. And it's kind of like he'll get out there and just be dominating race and NASCAR will like call something silly on him or throw out a caution or, you know, just to, mm -hmm. like because there was a bird on the track or something like, sure. that, you know, like caution for the debris. Wind, yeah, the wind was blowing. <laughs> yeah, things like that. And it, it just kind of reels everything back in and makes it exciting. So I guarantee you, there definitely will be some, you know, Kyle Bush is not going to get up there like lap you know 10 and lead the rest of the race i guarantee you that there will be people that are gonna stay out there and change up pit strategies and stuff so you know yeah. there will be a couple opportunities for that and um like i said who else is going to be like a good fast dominant truck so that's why you know creed definitely or some of those guys that we mentioned could be the mm -hmm. ones that are up there if kyle bush gets put the lap down of course he's going to figure it out and, and make it back up. Oh, yeah. But that gives you maybe 15, 20 laps and somebody else. Yep. And those are the points that we're going to try to get outside of the, the Kyle Bush floor. Uh, so good stuff on that. Uh, Austin Hill, Kyle Bush, Creed, uh, Crafton, Zane Smith, and Parker. I like those. Maybe Nemechek, maybe. I don't know. But a uh, good recap there at the top. Now let's talk about some 7K and below drivers that we need to fill out these you know super stud lineups with i mean the, well, this isn't good the, before we get to 7k there's two guys that i would possibly consider um that are a little bit higher so if you're going with like the a mid-range yes well i wouldn't call okay. them mid-range they're, they're just that much above seven so yeah. <laughs> so okay. we're talking so if you're using some of those other guys that we said that are still in like the 10k instead of like the 11k and you're saving those couple hundred dollars um, this is where we might, you know, find a little bit of differential to win a yeah. GPP if things follow the right way. The first one would be Connor Daly. Now, the only 
concern. Like he's starting at 36. He's a decent driver. I have that he possibly can get up into the top 20, maybe as high as like 18. Uh, he, he's a good driver, but he's in the Nice truck and there's a lot of Nice trucks in this field and they're good trucks, but they have had issues. They have their demons mm-hmm. sometimes and, and mechanical problems and, and breaking down. So I'm not saying do not play any Nice trucks. There's, um, you know, I'm just saying the potentials there. So they're, they can be hit or miss at right, times. Right. But, yeah. but I do think at starting at um, 36, he definitely has a lot of opportunity to um, move up the field. The other guy I'd be looking at is starting seventh. This is kind of risky. 7,300 is Chandler Smith. He's also in a Kyle Busch motorsports truck. Mm-hmm. He's got a really good truck. And I think that he can um, possibly stay up in the top five and maybe get out there and lead some laps. So, um, so those are the two guys, but you ready for the 7k? Yeah. Throw? Okay. Let's, 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 let's start with Tanner it. Gray. Now Tanner let's Gray. Get, yeah. Go ahead. Go right ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's he's a good option. He's seven K. So if you were to do the the up top pairing, though, he's a thousand dollars more. So that means you'd have to take somebody down in the four or fives. Um, mm-hmm. But he's a, he's a solid play. He finished third here last year. Um, he could get up into the top ten. Uh, he could pick up five to ten place differential points and start in twenty second. So I could see him anywhere from seventeenth to twelfth easily. Yeah. So I think he's safe. If, um, but again, he's little bit ex- the most expensive one out of this group uh, right. david, david gillian's next one down 6900 he's a decent driver but i can see him losing five to ten spots so i yeah. really want to pay up for him um nope. Derek kraus he's starting eighth that's way too high i way too high mm-hmm. I, I can't see him staying up there with all these other drivers that could potentially get up into the top ten Chase Purdy starting 21st is 66. Uh, he's got good equipment. He's got some talent. He's had a struggle. He's still a young driver trying to figure it out. But I think he can at least finish around the starting spot, if not move up like maybe five points. Yeah. So, um, he's he, a fringe play, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah you know, but, like he's a, like if you wanted to go like 20 lineups and you had maybe one or two with Purdy, I think that'd be acceptable. Yeah, I just like that he, his truck is solid and he's reliable. Like, as we go down here, we're going to be getting to some scary um, zones. <laughs> uh, Jordan Anderson is decent also. He could pick up about five spots. Uh, yep. He didn't do well here last time. I think he finished. 32nd. Uh, yeah, 32nd. Yeah. So he's 28th. But I could see him getting up to, like, 23. I think. Yeah, I, and he owns his own team. So, right. he, you know, he, he, he does his own work for his own car like so his only focus is sponsored and everything so he's safe he's not going to park it right i now the next two are i think is where um the chalk is going to be in the value range yeah it's going to be um at 65 and 64 actually 64 63 uh haley deegan has a really good truck uh has shown a lot of patience in these first couple races she did get into some wrecks but it didn't seem like it was her fault she does that was daytona right Not in the road course and in the 500, but it does seem like she was really trying to, you know, get a feel and run laps. And she was like in the teens, you know, like average mm-hmm. running position. So you know, there's a lot there. Good sponsor too I, on the car. Yeah. And if she's starting 30th, I can sit here and get five to 10 spots. And that def- that that could get you like 30 DK points and be like five X at her. And, and, and that's, that's decent. Right. Um, I like that. Ryan Truex, he finished, I think, eighth last year. Or it was like, I think 12th last year. He oh, is definitely the chalk at 6,300, right. starting 24th. Uh, again, it's a nice truck. And we said, you know, that that's kind of scary, but like he seems to take care of this truck. He's a good driver. He's a good um, driver, yeah. So I, I'm definitely like high on him. I think he's might be my favorite out of the, the value place. Um, Danny Bond. <laughs> i usually don't play <laughs> yeah danny B will call him um 26 nothing special here could lose some could gain some let's move on uh spencer boyd he, there's a good truck uh should move up and sniff a top 20 young motorsports so um yep. like that play 
Corey Roper, 6K. He's aggressive. He can move up. Can be a little risky, but I know you really like him. I like Roper made me some money at Daytona, so I'm, yeah. I'm loving Roper this Roper year. Roper Robal used to be like plugins, like you would like be the like, yes. last guy into cash lineups a lot last yes. year. Especially in these cow bush tracks. Right. Yeah. Um, here's a little bit of a dark horse that people might not like just completely go over. Starting 38th is Brett Holmes. He was the ARCA winner last year. He did really well at um, Vegas and Kansas and these um, similar one and a half mile tracks. I'm pretty yeah. happy on him. I think he can get up into uh, the mid 20s. So I can see a 10, maybe 15 place differential points for him. I he, like that. He, he's a very good, talented driver at 58. So he's one that will definitely, you know, help you fit in. Um, Tyler Hill, I think he's pretty safe. He's like a kind of like a Ryan Newman. He's someone that goes out there and is smart and keeps the truck clean and just, you know, just runs the race. He's probably not going to be up in the top 10, but he's going to no. finish probably where he started, maybe – pick up a couple spaces he's starting 25th so i could that's yeah. exactly where i thought he'd finish like when you right. said tyler hill is like oh middle 20s <laughs> yeah yeah and, and, and that's fine even if he loses a couple you know if he's out there and, and runs race at that price if it gets you other guys in your lineup then, mm -hmm. then you're good uh dawson cram 56 i think he's a little, a little bit risky high. yeah, yeah. He, he started 23rd so i, I think that's high teep fulgerman um same thing 5500 i think he's better than cram and i think he's one that could it finish like 20th or like in the low yeah. teens so like like he did finish so. 20th last year yeah so yeah. I, I can see him get up to like 17th so um you know it's 20th starting 20th is like a little bit scary but at 5500 i think it opens up a lot i, I think he's one that i feel okay with um, BJ McLeod, I'm not sure if he's going to run the full race, so he's a right. scratch. Um, Chris Wright, he's starting, he's in a young truck, he's, but he's a road racer. Like, right. And, and that's why he, and he's starting 15th, which is way too high. And it's because he ran Daytona 500 because he was running the road race and he ran the road race and did well there. So I think, right. that, you know, but that's scary. Um, also, Wayne Self is starting 12th. That's kind of scary too. Um, now, I usually like playing Wayne Self, but that's yeah, and, and that's why and that's why he's starting 12th is because he's had a good season so far. However, yeah, yeah. I see him as like a 17th to 20th place truck, and you're losing like mm -hmm. five to seven DK points there. So um, I agree. I wouldn't play anybody else here. So I think Fulgerman is like the definite floor. If you guys want to go YOLO and play some of these guys, but Carson Hoves Navar, he has a 25% DNF rate. He's starting 10th. I do not see him finishing in the top 10, maybe not even in the top 20. Norm Benning and Jennifer Joe Cobb are yeah. <laughs> drivers that have um they have really nothing like they they're letting more trucks in these races now. So they don't have to compete to qualify to get in. They, mm -hmm. they go out there just for I think a Sunday drive. Well, it's not Sunday, it's like Friday night time. They, they um, usually race for like Daytona, Talladega, like right. some of the bigger trucking events to try to get lucky to make extra money. That's really all they're there for. And, when and we get the, to the mile and a half, so I always scratch them off. Did, did I see like Jennifer Joe Cobb is like 47 years old or something? Yes, she's that old like, now. What? Wow. <laughs> yeah, she's in her 40s now. It's yeah. funny because <laughs> we were talking about Haley Deegan and how young she is and yeah, Riley Decker and I was like well you know there's Jenny Joe Cobb and then I looked her up she was like 43. And, like, and, oh. for her. And, and, and Norm too but they constantly like they can't stay on the lead lap the trucks just don't have that speed and I think both of them have gotten black flagged a couple times last year for not even being able to make speed so yeah you know and then on the the cheapest guy at 45 is um starting 37 so is jesse i um but he's got a 25 uh, dnf rate yeah I, he's i thought it was interesting but then i saw like how many races like he didn't finish and um, i was just like that's risky i don't even remember what team he raced for but i remember we played him a few times last year he had a, had a, he had a decent brothers truck is he an, okay? I mean, maybe that's a 
your last D GPP dart, like if you're trying to get Bush, Hill, and Creed in some way, that would probably be the only way to possibly do it. And I don't advise against doing that in many GPPs. Well, he's finished both races. A he's raced in Vegas and he's finished 28th. So that would be, you know, 10 differential points, but again, risky. Risky for sure. Definitely going to be one off in the MME formats, nothing high dollar, anything like that. Uh, but I mean, that's going to wrap that up for the 7K range. And that's, you know, kind of how you have to do a cow bush race. You have to just kind of make a checklist. You know, you go down the list, scratch guys off and say, OK, I can play him in and out of different variations of lineups because in cow bush races, it's swinging and missing a lot. So typically this is a good race to do 20 entry maxes or like if you get the 150 mini max or like the 150 uh, ten dollar, you know, this is kind of like your jam to do more lineups than just one or two bullets. I guess that's what I would say on you know, uh, DraftKings lobby strategy. But uh, anything else on this slate? Any last second thoughts? No, like we talked about um, in the NASCAR video, uh, sometimes in races like this, if you're trying to pick who's going to be the second dominator, like pick like the 20 max, that's only a buck, and then start with Kyle Busch and like find your value guys and like your core guys and then rotate like, between like Creed and like all the guys up up top that we we talked about, a John Hunter Neva check, um, maybe throw yeah. a back roads, maybe hold on to the pole, a Crafton, Friesen, you know, Eckert, Gillian, like all those guys that are Chandler Smith starting in the top 10 and, you know, build 20 lines with just a couple guys different with your core guys that you feel really solid about. And, you know, if that's the one that, wins the race or becomes the you know dominator then it's good you're looking at an optimal yeah right. and it really helped me too because like when the construction for my nascar one i had byron in one of those lines and even though we thought you know he'd be a solid play we had no idea he was going to win it um yeah no. <laughs> yeah looking back at xfinity nobody nobody thought snyder was winning that that was on and anybody radar. that was a random ass finish <laughs> right right, right. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that'll I think that'll wrap it up uh, for this NASCAR Truck Series event uh, for our video at Las Ve for Las Vegas. Um, I am TK Nation forty seven. That is Mega Ruler thirty one. Um, yeah, I think that'll do it. And uh, thank you for listening in. If you want to get to the Discord channel to find our core lineups for tomorrow and it, with Mega Rulers projections. You better take a nap or get a cup of coffee because if you're like me on the East Coast, this is starting at 9 p.m. It's going to be a late night. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they can get into Discord, get their lineups done early, and if they want to fall asleep, wake up to some green screens, they can do so. Um, you can find that link in the Discord, uh, our Discord link on our Twitter handle at, FS, or, yeah, at FSI underscore DFS. And that link in that bio gets you projections, gets you uh, core lineups, and um, gets you, you know, one-on-one -on -one talk with us leading up to all the races in the weekend. Uh, looking forward to seeing you guys in the chat. Uh, comment below. I uh, will do my best to get to all the comments um, as I do have to work tomorrow, but I don't work Saturday. So uh, always around on the weekends. And uh, Mega, thank you for joining us this evening. And uh, looking forward to another fun weekend ahead. Yep. Good luck, guys. All right. See you, everyone.